Caradasi spent nearly a decade as a victim of an elaborate catfishing scheme. She believed she was in a relationship with a man named Bobby, and it is shocking who the catfish's true identity is. In 2009, a 32-year-old Carrot received a message from a man named Bobby through Facebook. She had never met Bobby, but her cousin was actually dating Bobby's younger brother, JJ. Bobby, the cardiologist, was based in Kenya and the UK. Carrot herself had been active in the Kenya and South Asian community as her parents were born there. She eventually did bump into Bobby at a bar, but Bobby was confused and had no idea who she was. But Carrot believed that she had possibly just bumped into Bobby at the wrong time. He was probably drunk. But anyways, Carrot seemed to be going through some sort of rough patch in her life. Although she had a great career working in marketing and had a gig as a radio DJ, at the time she had just gotten out of a long-term relationship. She was longing to get married and raise a family. She really wanted children. Bobby seemed to be sort of an escape from all that was going wrong in her life. However, Bobby himself was going through some tough times as well, but Carrot was there when Bobby got married, divorced, remarried, and then divorced again. One day, she got a message from her cousin Simran Bogle saying that Bobby had been shot in Kenya. Then Carrot was told that Bobby was in a witness protection and was staying in a hospital in New York. But apparently, the witness protection program allowed Bobby to chat with Carrot through Facebook. Luckily for Carrot, Bobby had many friends on Facebook that would update Carrot on Bobby's condition. She would eventually send him voice memos, but she received text messages in reply instead. Carrot didn't question this as she thought it was just because Bobby had suffered focal cord damage. In 2015, Bobby said that he loved Carrot and the two began a relationship. And eventually, they even got engaged despite having never seen Bobby. Things were going well for the lovebirds, but eventually Bobby became controlling, monitoring what she did and who she spoke to or texted. She stated that in the beginning it was nice, but that it became quite scary. The stress of the relationship had her losing weight rapidly. Carrot recalls becoming so consumed by the relationship that she didn't spend enough time with her grandmother. Sadly, Carrot's grandmother passed away. When a funeral was held, Bobby did not show up, so Carrot gave Bobby an ultimatum. Fly into London to see her or it was over. Bobby then claimed to book a ticket in a hotel in Kensington, but why wasn't Bobby meeting with her if he flew in as he claims? So Carrot hires a private investigator who finds that Bobby has been living in London all along. She went to Bobby's address in Brighton. Shaking and panicked, she confronted Bobby only to receive a confused reaction from him. From Bobby's perspective, he didn't know who this woman was. He threatened to call the police on her, and even worse, Bobby's wife was present at the time as well. I mean, imagine standing there in front of this woman who claims that your husband has been engaged to her this entire time. So of course, Carrot is panicking right now. She calls up her cousin, Simran, who tells her to go home. And the very next day, she finally reveals to Carrot that she has been Bobby all along. So Simran had created all these profiles on Facebook to talk to Carrot. When Carrot tried to report her cousin, the police told her that she was not the victim, but the real victim was Bobby and his family. Simran never revealed her intentions behind scamming her cousin or using Bobby's identity. Now, Carrot has said something very interesting. She explained, quote, Bobby and I haven't spoken. I'm a little bit disappointed. I think he's only just realized in the last couple of months how closely connected we are, but that's not on record anywhere. I'm a little bit disappointed this many years down the line. I am disappointed by the lack of joint upness on the approach. I've tried to make sure that everybody in the journey is looked after, doesn't feel vulnerable, everybody's safe, but then you sometimes feel like you're alone in that responsibility. I don't feel like anyone else feels that back for me. Now, I find this very interesting take from her um, because the real Bobby doesn't owe you any sort of closure. He was never a part of this in reality and I'm sure he doesn't want to get entangled in this mess now. I mean, this whole ordeal was probably disturbing and scary for his family. I think it's 
more than enough that he showed up to be interviewed for this Netflix documentary. And if you haven't seen it, it's on Netflix and it's called Sweet Bobby. Let me know what your thoughts are on this case. I would love to hear it. And for now, take care and stay safe. Bye!